Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Day three of CES 2024 in Las Vegas. The day starts with a talk about wildfire management by a drone company based in Alberta. So let's get into it. Yeah, we have, uh, yeah, we're doing a lot uh, more on the commercial side of things. Um, specifically, um, being in, uh, we build our own uh, unmanned aircrafts. Cool. We were working directly with uh, government agencies, um, specifically wildfire. We're pushing, we're pushing how uh, wildfire integrates unmanned aircrafts and we're working towards uh, trying to give them better eyes in the sky. Okay. Um, so it's focused on sur surveillance of the wildfires, reconnaissance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we do obviously the hot, hot spot detection, building up maps for them. Oh, okay. So when they get up in the morning, they know exactly where they have to go. So a bit of preventive stuff as well always, as... Yeah, always. Yeah. So, where we end up going with it, you know, we'll see where it goes. 2024 is going to be a very uh, big season. Um, we haven't had the precipitation at West. We haven't had the snowfall. There's still over 60 fires burning in Alberta. Is that right? Wow. Uh, last year uh, was the worst. Was the worst year by 10 times yeah, for yeah. wildfires. So this year's not going to be uh, looking great for us either. So hopefully we can get on uh, the early track and do what we can and help out. Sounds cool. One of the biggest problems that I've seen out there um, with wildfire stuff is recreational drone pilots who are, I assume, not aware that they have to stay clear. Yes. And so we, like I put out public service announcements yeah, every year, it's like, get out of the way of those fires, absolutely. stay clear. Any other recommendations you have for those folks? Uh, keep it simple, keep your drones, your drones on the ground. It's that simple, it's the safest aspect. Um, nine out of 10 people are doing it for the personal reasons. Right, yeah. And you know what? Oh look, there's a fire, let's get some footage. Show and my as, friends. As interesting it is to see on, like you're just creating a dangerous situation, not just for you know yourself, but for the pilots flying. A helicopter, if they're picking up water, they're going from zero feet into a water up to maybe only 200 feet. They're flying with a 100 foot long Bambi bucket off the bottom of a, uh, a helicopter. And also, you know, you're flying your little Mini 3 or even like a larger 300. You know what, are they gonna see you? It's not safe. Not, so, not at so all. So you tell me, exactly, what are, what are the laws state in Canada for within a fire? How far do you have to stay away? That's a good question. I think it's I think it's five nautical miles. Correct. So ten kilometers in in normal more speak. Or less, yeah. More or less, yeah. So ten kilometers away from a wildfire, any point of it. So it's not the center of it. It's the so, the outside edge. So we say wildfire. But what happens when a house down your block has a fire? Now you're going to launch a drone up. And this is one of the things that we see. Yeah. Uh, we have guys that work with our company who work with uh, agencies as drone pilots on a fire unit. They're throwing their aircrafts in the air. Right. Why? Because they're giving those firefighters uh, situational awareness. So by an individual coming out there, the only thing you're doing is putting yourself in danger and putting other people in danger. Mostly putting other people in danger. Exactly. So, so it's not a wildfire if a house is on fire, but it is an emergency situation. Yes. Get and out that, of the that way. Is also state in cars regulations. Yes, it absolutely so is. Make sure you guys check those out. If you don't know your regulations, stay on the ground. We have uh, large uh, multi-hour quadricopters. Mm -hmm. We deal with a few DJI stuff. So yeah, yeah. Cool. cool. Very cool. And then we're developing some technology around uh, being able to fly autonomously and integrate with the uh, firefighting operations. Right. Uh, so if we're flying with water bombers, um, we can't be running into them, obviously. Yes. So we've developed our own detection void system. Uh, it's all radar based, so it's all weather. It works day and night. Um, and then. The other technology we developed as part of that is if we're flying beyond visual line of sight and can't see the aircraft over, over the horizon, what happens if we fly through icing conditions? We'll have no idea it happened. A drone might fall out of the sky and we'd never know mm. why. So as part of that, we developed an icing sensor uh, to oh, okay. in-flight icing originally. So this, this is actually one of our really big projects. This is what we're showcasing here. Um, it's going to give a little more uh, you know, insight to where we can go. So obviously we are an unmanned aircraft company, but what we... Uh, but this is for a Chinook, like a... Oh, I'm, yeah. I, I am so impressed. You're one of the first people to actually be able to pick that up. So 
We're working towards putting... It's my advanced vision and reading system. <laughs> you know what? It's a simple little things like that. A lot of people don't have that skill set. So, what this essentially is, is right now, uh, most most aircrafts have no way to tell what's going on in the exterior of the airplane. So, this is going to give, like, visual and audio cues to the pilot inside the aircraft. Right? There you have a shit ton of stuff going on. You don't really... You don't really have that, uh, you don't really need to know is always going on what's outside, right? But if you have a device that can tell you when you're going to fly, or you're also flying into unfavorable conditions, it's going to give you a little bit of status exactly what's going on on your wingtips or, you know, different parts of your aircraft. Right, yeah. Helicopters don't have wings. Well, they do, but they go really, really fast above your head. So then, you know, you fly in a little bit of moisture, and then that moisture also you get cold. Because as you go up in elevation, it gets colder. Well, guess what? That that cold just turned to ice. And now our sensors turned red. And now it's going to give that pilot. Well, now it's turned green again. But yeah. yes, but, but it was red. But, yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. Right. It comes up with a warning. It gives you visual cues. Hey, back here. You we're down minus twelve up here. And I, you have multiple different ones. Well, up front here we're sitting at zero degrees. Obviously, right now we don't have them. So if he looks out his cockpit window, he'll see nice, clear conditions on his the nose of his aircraft. But in the meantime, his tail is frozen up, and probably his rotors. And it's going to give give them a little more of a threshold to understand. A small private plane, a quarter of those takeoff incidents is directly resulting to ice. So you have two products, really. You've you've got a. We have you, several. Products. We've got several products. This is what we're showcasing here this week. Oh, I see. Okay. So you've got your icing detector warning system, which is fantastic. Obviously, it works. Works fast. It's easy. Great demo, by the way. Um, and then you've got your the the surveillance systems for wildfires and hotspots and things like that via drones. Wow. Super. Yeah. That's what that's uh, what we do in a quick nutshell. A quick two-minute conversation. Um, we do a lot more outside of that, obviously. Tell us one more thing. Oh, well, uh, Fred here told you all about our, our uh, what we call our A3S setup, which is our autonom or autonomous uh, air autonomous airspace awareness system. Autonomous airspace awareness system. Yes, yeah, so we could probably add a fourth A for avoidance. Yeah. Uh, but it's fully autonomous. Um, just the issue, as you know, in Canada, um, in the US here, there's incredible cellular coverage. Um, yep. I don't know what the numbers is. Great. In Canada, it's atrocious. Especially where we're fighting these wildfires, um, there's no cell coverage most of the time. Right. So we need our system to be entirely on board the aircraft. We can't be relying on radio communication. I, we have some really good point to point radios. But it's still not good enough. Um, if we see an aircraft, we can't have a radio, a radio you know, fail and run into them. Right. So our system's entirely on board the aircraft and makes decisions autonomously. It, it lets the pilot at the remote station know what's happening so they can intervene and change it if they'd like to. But if there's any sort of communication loss, it acts autonomously. And the best, one of the best things about our system is generally in the past, when people have looked to detect and avoid, they're looking at near mid-air collisions. So that's a 500-foot radius. Um, I guess you're Canadian, so 152-meter radius. Yeah, I was doing the conversion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and most people are looking at that. Well, you get to 151 meters, you have a lot of paperwork to write up when you get home because you're not allowed to do a near mid-air collision. Mm. So there's a larger bubble uh, c considered well clear, and that's a general aviation concept. And it's 2,000 feet, or about 610 meters. Okay. So we actually target, because of our radar's range, we're able to remain well clear in almost all encounters. So that wow. includes the most dangerous case point head on with a Cessna. Because um, Cessna's in our kind of the hyper flying, Cessna's and helicopters are our main concern. Right. Because right. uh, they're in the same sort of airspace we are. Um, we're usually above the 400 foot ceiling for drones uh, so that our sensors can operate better. Okay. Uh, but still, not too high. We're not playing with jetliners. No, no. But you're 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 in that mid range of exactly. a little bit above the drones, you but still pretty low. Yeah. yeah. So ADSB doesn't help you, or is that because Cessnas typically don't carry it? That's exactly it. We do integrate ADSB in, um, but a lot of Cessnas don't have it. Um, even worse is crop dusters. Yes. They don't have transponders either, because um, we also have uh, yeah other, other other unmanned aircraft. 
And as we all know, drones are not allowed to transmit out any yep. on an ADSB. So this is where our system really shines, is because it gives those uncooperative aircrafts or objects. Yep. It gives us a funny chance. Nice. So you you developed your own radar system? Is that or is it integrated? We integrate a commercial off-the-shelf radar system okay. um, and are designed to be agnostic with multiple uh, radars, um, even computer vision sensors, uh, depending on the use case, kind of uh, your swap size, weight, power constraints. Um, we have a lot of choices, for, especially integrating onto a faster aircraft. We have to integrate a bigger, badder radar. Okay, nice. You guys, sounds like you're you're in SFOC land all the lot, all yeah, the time. Like, um, we have SO, SFOCs for very similar aircraft. We have different SFOCs for very, very similar airspace. All of our pilots are trained at the advanced level, plus a lot more. Um, we are all always talking on the radio, so we're able to transmit and speak with other aircrafts. So, like our level of expectation from our pilots is at a very high rate. We work out of an airport. We had lots of conversations, but flying out of the airport, we basically have the thumbs up to fly out of airports. So one of our partners, Drone Delivery Canada. Oh yeah, okay. We fly out of the uh, Edmonton International Airport. We have the thumbs up. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. And it's really, you know, at that kind of thing, even more importantly than the, the SFOC paperwork and all that, it's the cooperation with other companies yeah. with the airports, with the aviation systems, with with those guys yeah, in the water bombers and everything. Yeah. So, and that's actually another part of one of the things that we do. Um, working with different agencies, we have our own ground school in house. Okay. We bring in outside companies, other firefighter departments, and we actually train them and work towards, you know, giving them the skill sets to actually use their aircraft because anyone can buy a drone. You can go for 10 bucks, you can go get your basic license. Okay, you can watch fine. my videos and get your license. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but that's like, that's the one step. It's, yes. It's how do you utilize a tool? Everyone can buy a hammer. I can buy 15 hammers. When am I going to use each of those hammers? And when are they the best practice for them? Exactly. Right? So yes. that's one of the other things that we do is ensure that we give, you know, um, various, different, various different agencies the right tools to be able to their job. That's fantastic. Great stuff. You guys have been doing wonderful work. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you for your chat. And, Thank uh, you for yeah, your we'll, time. We'll... So great to see such a broad range of technologies coming out of Canada. These Pegasus guys have it really covered. Thanks very much for your demos guys and we'll catch more of you in the future.